Welcome to the webinar, everyone. We'll begin shortly. We're just going to give everyone a chance to, to get in and we'll get started. Okay, so we'll uh, get started. Hello and welcome to the final webisode in our APM series. This webisode will be presented by, the, by our APM expert, Dan Marcillo, with a special guest from Larry Terry to present a customer success story. Dan will go through the different types of analytics and how they can benefit your organization. Dan and Larry will then take you through, through some personal customer success stories they experienced and show you how quickly these customers saw an ROI while using Aviva APM software. At any point in time, if you have any questions, you can use the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we'll also have a couple of polling questions during the presentation to understand your experience with the topic at hand. So thank you, Dan and Larry, for being here today. And uh, the floor is all yours. Great, thanks very much, Elisa. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dan Marcillo. Uh, I work in the uh, Asset Performance Management Group with Aviva. I've been there for 31 years. I uh, spent most of that time out implementing uh, our technology in the field. And uh, before that, uh, for anybody in Southern Ontario, I worked in uh, General Motors in St. Catharines, Ontario in uh, 1986, 87, 88. So I'm going to go through uh, a PowerPoint presentation to uh, dig into what asset performance management is and why it can and should be important to you and your specific uh, companies and manufacturing. And I'm joined with Larry Terry, uh, who can introduce himself when we get to that section or part of the presentation, please. Okay. So the tagline here, uh, are your assets talking to you and uh, are you listening? Okay. So a couple slides here. What is asset performance management? I'm, and I'm going to clip along at a good pace because uh, of the time here this morning. This is kind of the 30,000 foot viewing. And I think all of the different people from all the different companies uh, scattered throughout Canada here in the uh, Wonder Work Canada East Territory has uh, pieces of the puzzle here, right? So simply put the slide, you have assets located, uh, you know, uh, across a broad uh, geography uh, in, in some cases. Um, you're probably connected to them in some capacity, wired or wirelessly. All of that data is going into like a level one or level two wonderware or Pi historian or possibly other historians. They say that 40 to 60 percent of assets in North America are non-instrumented. So uh, we have a piece of technology for operators to go out in the field, take readings on mobile devices and wirelessly beam those to the historian. And then once that data, the slide's building left to right, and once that data is in a historian, 
there's different capabilities and that's really the uh, the sweet spot of what I want to talk to you about today and so will Larry Terry uh, in, in his experience as well where you have that data and we have different ways to interrogate that data look for potential problems and notify you and and then do the ultimate handshake with your maintenance system as well okay uh, progressing on I'll let the slide build out and this is this this is a slide that we'll spend most of the time on today. Uh, and it's pretty busy. It also builds left to right, okay, kind of a clockwise uh, uh, formation. And I'll talk to you about the pieces, okay? So typically, or there's options here for clients that are going to start on the APM journey, right? Asset performance management. And, and before we get into the nuts and bolts of that, there's, there's some, let's call them slivers of capability that Aviva has under an umbrella called asset strategy optimization. That's what, you know, you see three, three letter acronyms everywhere, right? And, and some of that is kind of getting your house in order if it needs it prior to really optimizing uh, the APM side of the equation. And that is one thing that clients have asked our help for to hold their hand and walk them through the process is true criticality ranking. Really, and, and you folks know this, not all assets are of equal importance to you, right? It could be even the same asset, same brand, same manufacturer, but maybe where it's located in the plant or the equipment that it's, it, it's uh, attached to or the product that it's making or the season that it's running. There's a whole host of reasons. So a couple things here. First, we have something called, um, we can do a true criticality ranking on your assets. And then what some, clump, some companies use that is to correlate what maintenance strategy they'll use to remedy problems on that asset, right? So we do a quick Fumico analysis. We have a tool that will export your data out of your existing maintenance system, okay? It's called, the tool is called Optimizer Plus, and uh, what it'll do is a quick Fumica analysis, failure modes, effects, cause, and analysis. Excuse me. We have a, 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 a database of over 20 years of experience, uh, and we have a, a capability in it is what I wanted to say at a high level. I'm trying to go very, very fast here. Um, and the output of that will be a true criticality uh, ranking that will update your asset and import it back into your maintenance system. Uh, that'll be used for things that I'll show you in, in, in the um, Insight cloud platform here that I'm gonna talk about momentarily. Another thing to do, uh, or another capability that this ASO tool has is helping you scrub up your PM records, okay? And what I mean by that is many times I visit a plant and you know I see what the, the, the technician is giving along the lines of preventive work and the instructions or the text, uh, the tasks, however you want to word it, uh, in some cases are very poor. Inspect, repair, uh, refer to OEM manual, uh, look at the warranty. Um, so this tool also has the ability once you export what you have in your system to scrub up and embellish your libraries. So true, meaningful uh, activity, actions, okay? And even the, uh, the frequency on how often to do them, right? So the tool has the ability to let you know what assets you're doing too much PM on and what assets you're not doing enough PM on. And again, both sides of that coin, uh, is costly, risky, and could be problematic to you. Okay, so there's PM libraries and scrubbing. And then the last thing I'll talk about the ASO is, is a library, right? Um, that same thing is decades old, has thousands and thousands and thousands of labor hours put into it, okay? And, and what that is, is the... Equipment is broken into families or classes. I believe there's around 76 of those in our database. So 76 different groupings of assets and a group of asset is assigned to one or more failure modes. And a failure mode is linked to one or a number, number excuse me, of prescribed actions. And again, why that is important is in 
the Insight Cloud Platform that I'm going to talk to you about here momentarily um, is, is when I bring to your attention, not only, hey, um, you know, uh, Fabian or George or, or Brent, uh, heads up, we think we've caught a problem with this piece of equipment. Uh, this is the equipment. Uh, we're going to raise a work request or work order in your maintenance system. And the last thing that this library provides, this is what's key, is you know a bulletproof laser focused list of activities that are pertinent to that asset and the problem uh, to remedy the, the, the situation. So that's what the library holds. So that's a lot of talk, upfront work, criticality ranking, PM scrubbing, okay? And the library that will be used in the Insight Industrial Cloud Platform. Okay, so now that that's taken care of, right? Uh, if you want any more information about that, please hook up with your Wonderwork Canada East uh, account executive and uh, they will uh, answer any questions uh, that you have along those lines, okay? So the key here, getting back to the basics, are your, uh, is your equipment telling you they have problems, okay? And, and, and clearly you're on this, this conference because you've also either invested in the Wonderware historian or an, or an OSI Pi historian, which Aviva has acquired earlier this year, okay? Or you have other, other potential islands of information with other databases or Excel spreadsheets or what have you that you would want this tool to look at and, and populate, let's say, okay? So you're gonna publish the tags or the sensor data, the real-time data for your critical assets, okay? And that's another reason why you go through the criticality ranking is to determine what assets are more important than others. And, you, and, and typically, not in all cases, typically a client will publish or move that data from their on-prem historian into this industrial cloud. And Aviva simply calls that tool Insight. It's just a brand name for our industrial cloud platform. And that's the perfect marriage of monitoring and control data. Uh, it's a perfect marriage of having your MES and your production type data and uh, metrics. And it's a perfect marriage of having, we house all of your asset centric data as well. Okay, in one, we call it one source of the truth. Okay, because now that that, uh, you know, impactful data is in one environment, you've already bought and paid for that data from your plant floor. This simply extends the handout or the handshake to start using that data. And there's different capabilities. So I want to talk to you about different ways and different options. So it's not one or all. Sometimes client use more than one of these options in their environment. So let me talk, explain that quickly, please. Um, from the bottom up, we're going from uh, simple to more sophisticated. And what that is, is we have the first capability is called automa automatic analytics. There's no investment on your side. You get it for free. Uh, and that's simply, if, uh, if you can visualize the screen down here, I know it's hard to see this, but down the right-hand side, if you see my little hand for my mouse here in the bottom left-hand corner, this is what we call our news feed on the landing page of Insight. And what automated automatic analytics says, hey, one asset, one sensor looks at the previous seven days and says, hey, Martin, hey, Olivier, hey, Patrick, heads up. Um, this particular point on this asset over the last seven days is not normal. And um, you might want to investigate that a little bit further, okay? Um, the second level of sophistication, simple, free, fast, okay? S -s 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 second level of sophistication or choice for you is called condition-based. It's rules-based. That's the key. The rules word here is, is either you, because you intimately know the equipment, or Aviva at Wonderware Canada East can help you. Um, 
It's rules based. It's multivariable. So you could say, hey, if the temperature is this and the run hours is that and the voltage is this and the pressure is this or the vibration is that, right? If these thresholds or if these points, any all have been met, I want to notify, send a message to George, please, text message, email. Uh, I want to raise a work request in my Maximo or my Avantis or my SAP or my Limbo system. Um, and, and, and in that work request, I'm going to have very focused instructions on how to fix the problem that we've detected. Okay. It's rules based. It's simple. Okay. Um, I tell clients, um, if things break down and you know why, condition-based rules is very effective. Uh, if things break down in your plant and you don't know why, then guided analytics might be a help. So when I cross this line here from condition and automatic into guided analytics, so guided, and we have two flavors of advanced. Now, folks, you're getting into the predictive analytics world. And with predictive analytics, there's always a, 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 a requirement to build and deploy a model. It can be very simple. So guided analytics, you should be able to build and deploy a model in under five minutes. It's extremely easy. Myself and Larry have worked together on successful projects with clients. Uh, building and deploying models. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later in this presentation. Okay, so what Guide All Analytics says, hey, I, I want to create a model for an asset. I'm going to pull in a bunch of tags from that, that asset or even other assets, not to get more sophisticated. I'm going to look in the rear view mirror in the, uh, in, uh, and, and choose a period of time when the, the, that we have good data, what we think is good data, and I'm going to use it to build and deploy a model. I can put in filtering, hey, I only want that model to run when the asset is actually running, not when it's idle and not working. Hey, I want a, the model only to run when this certain product or SKU is being made, so on and so forth. The whole idea with that is what's very, very, uh, why this is helpful for automatic condition and guided is you could be looking at multiple, multiple assets and on an asset, many, many points. Sometimes I've seen people build a model using 15 different sensor points over the previous 90 days. It's impossible for a human to look at graphs and trends and try and you know, reverse engineer a problem. And that's what this technology does very, very effectively. It says, hey, I'm going to take these nine points on a pump. I'm going to look at the last six months. And I know the relationship between them and what's normal for that pump. Okay. And I know the little idiosyncrasies and the relationships and the deviations and so on and so forth between these sensors on that pump. And then if, if we have what we call along the guided analytics, uh, a poor anomaly score for the asset uh, that we put in a filter 85 or higher, okay? Um, it presents itself in the news feed again, saying, hey, um, we're looking at these points on this asset over this time frame. we call it a catch. Say, Michelle, we're not sure but we want to bring your attention to a potential problem because we think that this is starting, you know, early days of a potential problem. And why that's important to customers, they, they say it costs you folks three to five times more money to fix something once it's broke than an early warning. And that's what it is in the news feed. Okay, and I'll, I'll talk next about advanced analytics. This is more, rope, you know, this is, is measured in, minutes, uh, minutes to maybe an hour. Advanced analytics, it, it is a more investment in your time and ours, Aviva and Wonder Canada East, more subject matter experts to build one or multiple models and, and to fine tune them and deploy them. And then if there's a catch there to understand and walk down and validate the catch before you mobilize your people. 
Okay. And, and, but that the advanced analytics here, folks, gets into areas of predictive quality, predi predictive energy, predict predictive th throughput, uh, very advanced acid anomaly algorithms. So it's not just one algorithm, it has several. Okay, so more sophisticated. And, but, you know, we also have clients that have, you know, uh, a $6 million turbine that, they're, that they've set up our advanced analytics because uh, downtime or the cost of repair is incredibly expensive. Okay, so you have data and historian. You have different ways to look for problems. A client, I'll, I'll, I'll steal their term, automated eyeballs is what they call the insight cloud platform that Aviva has. Uh, we let you know that there's a problem. We can email you, shows in the newsfeed. We can do the handshake with various maintenance systems here on the top right-hand corner. So Aviva has uh, connectors to various maintenance systems, okay? So that it's, it's uh, cradle to grave. You have the data. We think there might be a problem, right? We, we've sent uh, Phil an email and then we've, we've created a work request in SAP for Phil or in Limbo for Phil to say, hey, please mobilize, send one of your technicians out to inspect a problem before you have an unplanned outage and it gets more expensive. And then the data from your maintenance system will also percolate back into the Insight Cloud platform and present itself on the asset page in Insight. So this is a continuous loop. Sorry, folks, lots of words. It's a pretty, pretty, um, pretty, pretty specific topic that we're trying to fix here. And, and I'll, I'll stop on that for this slide. And I think uh, Elisa has a, uh, a, a poll question for you at this point before I continue on, please. Yep, it should be up. You should be seeing it on your screen now. Yep, thank you, Elisa. Uh, while we wait, uh, Dan, there's a question. Do you want to okay. do Oh, sure. Uh, sure. Uh, in the chat? Okay. It's in, um, it's, no, we, we have a raised hand. Uh, oh. You can. You can go ahead and unmute yourself yeah. and ask your question. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it was a mistake. Okay. Um, if if they think of it, there's there's no problem. They can they can send that uh, to you, and I'll get an answer back in writing as well. Okay. Okay. okay I'm going to continue on. Um, th the next part of uh, the presentation, I'm simply going to have one single PowerPoint slide for each one of the choices. Okay. Advanced analytics, simple, free. You don't do anything to to set this up. It shows up in news feed. And it's a very simple graph saying, hey, look at this point for this asset over the previous seven days. Uh, this is not normal. And what's nice, I did not uh, explain this earlier. If you see my, my mouse here on, on the right side of the screen, is this useful? Yes or no? There's a little thumbs up, thumbs down. So you can train this over time and it'll learn uh, how, to, how to bring more, let's say, or similar data to you that you find meaningful, uh, 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 you know, as you uh, use the tool, okay? Condition-based, same idea. It's multi-tag, like I already mentioned multi-variable. Uh, could bring in different groups, safety, environmental operations. Um, uh, and it also uh, brings in the prescriptive actions from the ASO library. I, I mentioned about emails and doing the handshake to your maintenance system. So that's really nice. So I'm saying you have, you have historian data. You've already made that investment. This tool simply looks at it and says, hey, heads up, maybe a problem, and then mobilizes your technicians. So it's a whole, from a maintenance best practice, right? You have, what was a problem? When was a problem? 
who worked on it? What did they do? What did they find? What did they use? What did it cost? Right? So there's a whole record of that. Um, and it's and clients find that very, very useful. Okay. So that's condition based moving up the food chain. You have the guided analytics and I'll talk a little bit more about this because Larry and I just conducted a finished a 90 day pilot with a very large customer uh, just a few weeks ago. So I can talk very confidently about uh, the tool. Um, remember the difference between condition and guided condition rules based. You know the rules. You know why it breaks down. You know what you should be looking for. Guided analytics is, uh, this is problematic. We have unplanned outages. I'm losing my mind. Uh, I'm going to build a model of, you know, normal operating uh, metrics that I want it to run in. And then I want the system to tell me when it's running outside of those conditions. It's simple. It gives you a Dave Letterman top three list, I call it. The top three contributing factors of why that anomaly score is so poor, or another way to say this, is this, this asset presently is running in a very not normal range. Okay, that's a bizarre way to say it. I can simply click on this graph brings up full page, tells me six hours before the problem, two hours after, and you can put your Columbo school uh, skills to work and investigate why is, happen why is this happening? We got a sensor problem or no, no, um, this happened. We, we, we went out and talked to this person on the weekend and, and we found out this was, this was the problem, okay? So guided analytics is very helpful, fast, quick to deploy, I'll move on. I know uh, uh, Elisa is going to uh, have these uh, the slide deck uh, available to you if you're uh, interested. But just just brings some of the candidates, uh, potential assets that you could deploy and use guided analytics on. Okay, and this is this is just where we have experience. Uh, doesn't mean this is only the list of assets. Okay, um, and then the last frontier advanced analytics. Um, there's a few different ways to do this, um, but really folks getting cutting to the chase, you really have to art, be able to articulate the business problem that you are having. Talk to your Wonderwork Canada East executive, say, I'm having this problem and this problem and that problem. These are my top three issues in my plant. Do you have any advice? Can you make any recommendations on, you know, we have an investment in the data and the tools to get the, the knowledge base. Can you help me determine, you know, if there's any other choices available to me? And that's where I'm saying this is very, very involved. Different algorithms for different business problems. It, it, it in some cases, it predicts the future and compares that to the actual, and it's called an overall model residual, where the predicted and the actuals deviate by a certain percent, and that could trigger an action on your part. Okay, so there's a lot more information we can get into uh, under each one of these topic areas, again, but uh, just want to introduce it on this little uh, presentation today, and then we can have uh, uh, additional follow-up meetings if, if uh, that's of interest to you, okay? Um, and I think Elisa has, Elisa has another poll at this, at this moment that I'll pause here just for a, a second. Okay, I think um, I'm going uh, too fast and I ignored the results of the first poll. Um, I don't know if we want to talk briefly about that 
or the results of this poll, uh, uh, Elisa or Larry, I'm, I'm open to uh, um, um, the, your recommendation because I can't see the results of uh, when I'm in uh, uh, present mode here. Okay, here you go. Sorry yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah this I, is this I, poll. Yeah, I, yeah I, would, I would think that discussing uh, this poll would probably be more meaningful. So I'm good with that. Okay, that's great. Yeah, I actually agree with what I'm seeing here. <laughs> you, ha you, have, you have to start and start simple and then grow into some of the more sophisticated options for sure. Um, I would say, uh, you know, you all don't work in problem-free plants and uh, I'm sure there could be, uh, the, the door is open to experiment and to cut your teeth and to try one or more of these options uh, in your environment to see if they're successful or not, right? That's very, very normal. Uh, and what we find has been successful. And to that point, I'm just gonna move on here. I'll, I'll talk briefly and then I'll pass it over to Larry. This is a 90 day pilot that uh, Larry and I started at one particular plant. And uh, what was great is eventually in North America, they have 52 plants running in site, right? The Aviva uh, Industrial Cloud Platform. But they wanted to try guided analytics just on one group of, uh, uh, of equipment, okay? Which was what they call bottom welding equipment. Bottom welding equipment in the top frame here, top left, you can see order of magnitude, the equipment is quite large and sophisticated and their business problem, and I'll just be short here because we're running against time, I'm talking too much. Um, on this equipment, they have, they're dealing with very high temperatures. They have a number of sensors uh, and part of this equipment, uh, they have uh, very large uh, copper uh, shunts and cables were burning up and very expensive to replace and they didn't know why. So these are actual examples from this plant one, three and four because there's four of them on a bottom welding machine and you see close-ups one, three and four. They were burning up. They had no idea why. They deployed guided analytics uh, I, I, I helped them because they, you know, they know the equipment. This is, this is actual screen scrapes of the different uh, models that we built. I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, sum this up instead of going through all the detail. You see the dates, right? Very, very current. This is this year, by the way. Set up, I believe we ended up setting up uh, two models on two different pieces of equipment, five sensors per model, a period of time of a few months. And um, over the course of this pilot, we found four different catches. And this just gets into more detail. And um, excuse me, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, be brief and I'll pass it to Larry. Um, through the catches in the news feed, four different times, 90 days, that, that uh, guided analytics said, hey, there's a problem with this sensor or this temperature is starting to go higher than the others. So it was looking at uh, the relationship between the other sensors and what was normal and what wasn't. And, and there was four catches. Um, they went out and determined that uh, one particular cable's temperature was really escalating compared to the others and found out that the operator physically turned off a cooling water valve on the piece of equipment for that uh, cable. Uh, another time, uh, a sensor was just flatlining and, and, and giving, giving very erratic results. We notified them and they swapped out the sensor. Another time, a, a cooling line was actually plugged and was not cooling the line down properly. So um, the client, uh, deemed the pilot a success and is now investing in the tool and deploying it across their, their locations. Okay, so just wanted to give you, instead of just PowerPoint you to death, very recent, very real examples uh, 
that you know uh, are in a plant uh, and uh, thought we'd bring that to your attention. Larry, I think this is where um, I'll, I'll advance the next slide. This yeah. is this is a project that you were more involved in than I was. So I'll let you talk to it, please. Thank you very much, Dan. I want to thank everybody today for participating in this uh, webisode on uh, you know, analytics as part of the APM portfolio. As Alicia mentioned, this is the conclusion we've kind of been building up to the big hurrah. And uh, their recording should be available to you shortly after this. I also want to uh, uh, thank Alicia and the Wonderware Kennedy East team for uh, asking us and hosting uh, this event and our key presenter, Dan Marcillo, who's been with us for a long time and has a tremendous amount of really worthwhile experience with our industries here in Canada and abroad uh, with respect to our asset performance uh, portfolio. Uh, Dan has asked me to talk a little bit more about uh, uh, you know, some of our other experiences. You might notice in the last poll, it was pretty much even in terms of whether people were interested in conditional or interested in guided analytics. Um, and, 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 and everybody had uh, you know, a, a, bit of, a bit of experience with regards to some of the things that they see themselves kind of doing. It's funny that, and by the way, not unusual, that nobody really pulled in the advanced analytics part because advanced analytics are a very sophisticated you know, model replacing data scientist type, uh, uh, type of solutions that are almost typically used for heavy industry. So one of the case studies that I wanted to present around the predictive analytics uh, part in mining is doing a couple of proof of concepts fairly recently, where uh, in, in one application in the ball mill, if everybody uh, you know, has a visualization of what a ball mill is, it's the world's largest dryer drum in terms of diameter. It's three stories tall and it uses these huge expensive motors to kind of rotate the drum filled with these iron cannonballs to, uh, uh, to basically uh, you know, shred uh, the mineral material that's on the inside. Very expensive. There are a number of sensors that are available on these, and these are primarily around temperature, around winding, uh, you know, current and voltage, as well as vibration. So uh, our models were built uh, particularly for these motors and uh, were, uh, uh, were observed as part of the proof of concept to uh, measure temperature in one particular case where a notification was given, as we can see from the graphs uh, on the, on the left-hand side, where we have 160 degrees kind of running. And then over a, some period of time, over a few hours, the temperature started to rise where it kind of peaked, right? So we kind of look at where the trigger points were, and this is what appears in the orange category. And an alarm was kind of set because the, uh, the actual temperature exceeded what the predictive model had kind of said uh, should happen. So uh, engineering were notified of the increasing winding temperature. And it turns out that there were, uh, as a result of the extreme vibration that these ball mills uh, kind of go through, well, latches on the door had busted and the, uh, the door was left open. Uh, basically changing, uh, changing the uh, plenum characteristics for the, uh, for the cooling. So this was a multi-million dollar warning catch because if a motor failed, uh, there would be a cascade of particular issues. So that's a good example in the heavy industry. Uh, Dan, if you would be so kind as to advance to the next use case. All right, uh, you know, so very, uh, very similar uh, type of proof of concept approach. Uh, I don't have too many graphs in here, but basically it was a, uh, a maintenance uh, type of issue that was kind of caught through the advanced analytics tool uh, with respect to uh, system lube temperatures uh, around, a, uh, around a particular pump. And uh, the cost, uh, you know, although, you know, not in the millions of dollars was really a catch around cost avoidance. Uh, basically a small pinion bearing 
uh, as a failure would have been not necessarily catastrophic, but very expensive to kind of replace. So really, uh, it, it was not just the immediate cost of doing the repair, but it's really a loss of production value. Uh, uh, while the, uh, the new part uh, in a failed system needed to be ordered and needed to be repaired. So this is a really good example of how the predictive analytics models that we do, uh, you know, help you with regards to cost avoidance by being able to predict uh, failures by monitoring some of those same sensors that uh, Dan talked about in some of the other operations. So uh, that is it in terms of what I wanted to talk about. Alicia, back to you. So thank you for those that presentation, Dan and Larry. Once again, we appreciate everyone being here. If you have any questions, please uh, type your questions in the chat or raise your hand and we'll give you um, the ability to speak. Uh, I know we're getting close to the time, but we have a few minutes. Uh, we don't mind staying longer if you guys have questions. I would also say, Elisa, if, if they can't think of any, and if, if they do share the recording with others at their plants, uh, please just email our friends at Wonderwork Canada East, and we can huddle up. And if, if you want, get on a, uh, a, a quick teleconference to see if you have any potential candidates or any problem areas in your plant that we would, would want to uh, try this tool at. Thanks, Dan, and I, and I appreciate that as a segue. You know, based on uh, you know discussions that we would have with you, we are very open and uh, flexible to work with you to put pilots in or proof of concepts in with regards to any of the four models that we talked about today. So challenge us. Uh, you know, let us know what your particular problems are. We're excited about trying to demonstrate to you how some of this, you know, AI technology, uh, you know, can really be applied to pull out uh, and make sense of some of the information that your equipment is trying to tell you. Alicia, I want to thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to uh, present today, and we uh, look forward to hearing back from you folks. Thank you all, and enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you again, Dan and Larry. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow, you'll see an email going out from me with the recording of this webinar. Uh, and like uh, Larry and Dan mentioned, if you have any questions, please reach out to us or to your account executive. Oh, we have a little. Sorry, we have a question here from Patrick. You say that you were working with many CMMs, MM, sorry, CMMS. How about Intero? Okay, so I'm not personally familiar with Intero. Um, when I, when I put up the Avantis SAP Maximum Limbo, those, those are the ones that we have connections to, and, and that's why uh, we have experience in those. Um, but to answer uh, Patrick's question, um, if this is a cloud-based system, for us to integrate our in, uh, Insight Industrial Cloud Platform to Interol uh, would be very simplistic. If this is on-prem, you know, a terrestrial system, we can still integrate to it, uh, but from what my technical folks says, that, that integration is a little bit more involved, but we can do it and we have done it. So um, we, we would have to scrub up and, 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 and understand uh, the tool and the version uh, and, uh, and uh, talk to you about that. Um, and uh, can provide you a, a better val uh, you know, uh, idea of how long and how much it would cost, okay?
So thanks for that, Dan. I do have a little bit more experience with Intel, uh, and, uh, and and I would say at a very high level. Uh, although I am not aware of any particular customers that are using Intel uh, with our Insight platform, I understand architecturally speaking is is relatively straightforward. Thank you, thank you, Patrick, for the question, and thank you, Dan and Larry, for mm -hmm. clarifying. All right, and, and All right. Sure. Yeah. We, we need to be challenged more. more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are at the time. There's no more questions, but uh, like we said, please reach out to us and. Uh, if you have any questions and we'll, we'll be happy to help or set up some time with you. Thank you again, Dan and Larry. And uh, we appreciate you being here with us today. Merci, bonjour, okay. have a great day folks. Merci. Okay. Thank you.